So in this video, we're going to focus on what happens during fertilization. Now, it's very important that you understand what happens generally during the female reproductive cycle. So I suggest you go back and watch that video prior to watching this video. But what I stated in that last video was the fact that once that ovary has released that egg, the oocyte, into the uterine tube. So remember, you've got the vagina, the cervix, the uterus, the uterine tube, also known as the fallopian tube, and these little finger-like projections called fimbrae. Once these fimbrae have massaged that egg out of the ovary, then that egg is now within the uterine tube. Okay? Particularly, it's here at, called, at an area called the infundibulum. But regardless, the egg is now within the uterine tube. So, what we need to know is this. I stated at the end of the last video that once the ovary has released that egg, that this structure here that's released the egg turns into something called the corpus luteum. Okay? So remember, this structure here is called the corpus luteum and the corpus luteum releases a very important hormone called progesterone now what does progesterone do i told you that the pr progesterone travels to the uterus and prepares the uterine wall and that uterine lining for the implantation of an egg okay so remember at day 14 of the menstrual cycle, at day 14, ovulation occurs. This is when the egg is released from the ovary and the egg is now within the uterine tube. Okay? The corpus luteum releases progesterone. That's why we've got this progesterone release that's just come up. And progesterone further prepares the uterus for implantation of the egg. And remember, the corpus luteum has no idea what this egg is doing. It's under the assumption that it will be fertilized by sperm and will subsequently travel through and implant itself. It gives the egg 10 days to do this, around about. Which means the corpus luteum will, for about 10 days, continually release progesterone under the impression that the egg will get fertilized and implant itself in the uterine wall. Okay? Now, after 10 days, what happens? Well, the corpus luteum thinks that once this happens, the implanted egg will release a signal telling it, okay, I'm here, keep releasing progesterone, keep doing it. Without that signal, the corpus luteum will stop releasing progesterone after 10 days. Okay, what happens then? Well, if no fertilization happens, no implantation happens, progesterone stops being released, that means this uterine wall stops maintaining itself, stops thickening up, stops developing, stops preparing itself for implantation and starts to die off. And all these cells and blood vessels start to slough off and bleeding will occur and that's menstruation. And that will happen at the end of the 28 days. Now in this video, we're going to talk about what happens when this egg actually does get fertilized. And fertilization is when the sperm comes into contact with the egg. Okay, so what happens is, as we all know, ejaculation will occur and ejaculation of sperm within semen will occur and you need to know where this happens. Ejaculation happens at the vagina and not at the cervix, not at the uterus, definitely not at the uterine tubes. So once ejaculation has occurred, you now have around about 500 million, 200 to 500 million sperm deposited in the vagina. Now remember the vagina is very acidic, okay? So many millions of sperm will be killed off here at the vagina. The sperm needs to obviously travel from the vagina to the cervix, from the cervix to the uterus, from the uterus to the uterine tubes, all the way up to the infundibulum of the uterine tube where it needs to embed itself into the egg. By the time this 500 million sperm have reached the infundibulum, only 500 are left. So only one in a million sperm will make it to the egg. And again, only one sperm will penetrate through that egg. Now remember, you have the oocyte, the egg, and it's surrounded by this layer that I've drawn here called the zona pellucidum. 
And I told you that the zone of pellucidum, that the zone of pellucidum will allow for one sperm cell to get through. And once that happens, it will not let any more sperm cell through. So it basically shuts the gates for any other sperm cell. So once that sperm cell's in, remember, the egg has chromosomes and DNA, right? The male has chromosomes, DNA, and they'll come in and they'll recombine, they'll mix up. Now, as soon as the DNA from the sperm and the DNA from the egg combine, it will form what's called a zygote. So what's a zygote? A zygote is once the DNA of the sperm has recombined with the DNA of the egg, we now have a zygote. Okay? Now this zygote will start to travel its way through the uterine tube and as it does this, this cell in the middle will start to divide. And so that means we're going to go from that single cell of the zygote and it's going to split off into two cells, which will then split off into four cells, which again will split off into eight cells. Now, by the time this eight cell mass has divided into 16 cells, so let's draw that up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two. There we go. This is around about day three and day four. Okay, three to four days, you now have 16 cells inside this egg and this fertilized egg. This is called a marula. Okay, a marula. Now, this marula will again develop further. Now, what it develops into is this. This inner cell mass that we've got here, which I'm now going to draw in green, pushes itself to the side. And this inner cell mass, inner cell mass, is called the embryoblast. Embryoblast. The embryoblast creates the baby. Baby, okay. What else is there? Well, it, you then have this thickened outer portion called the trophoblast. And the trophoblast produces the placenta. So the embryoblast or the inner cell mass produces the baby, the trophoblast on the outside produces the placenta. The whole cell is called a blastocyst. It's called a blastocyst. And this is gonna happen at around about five to six days. This blastocyst will travel in to the uterus and it will embed itself into the uterine wall. So you've got the trophoblast on the outside and you've got that inner cell mass of the embryoblast and those cells will be on the side against the uterine wall. Now these trophoblast cells release a hormone, a very important hormone. The hormone that's released from these cells is called HCG. HCG stands for Human Chorionic Gonadotropin. What does HCG, Human Chorionic Gonadotropin, do? Well, remember I said that. If implantation doesn't occur after 10 days, progesterone stops and menstruation happens. Well, once implantation has occurred, 
that trophoblasts will release HCG. HCG will travel to the corpus luteum and will tell the corpus luteum to continue the release of progesterone. That means that the continued release of progesterone continues to maintain the integrity of the uterine wall, okay? Which means that we now have enough blood, enough nutrients and everything for this baby and for the placenta to develop. Why is this important? Well, HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, which is released at around about between one to two weeks, will be found in the urine. And this is how you do a pregnancy test. When you pee on that stick, what is that stick picking up? It's picking up HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, because it's telling you that you have implantation of an egg that has been fertilized and is now developing into a baby and that baby is coming from the embryo blast, the inner cell mass, and the placenta is coming from the trophoblast as well. So I hope all that made sense. Let me know if you have any issues and send me an email if you'd like me to talk about any more details. Thanks.